an introduction. So I'm Ming Sang, and uh, I'm a postdoc at Stony Brook University, working with Professor Yu Chen. So today I'm going to talk about how do we manage mixed fisheries. But before we really delve into that question, let's first say what are mixed fisheries at all. So in a simple word, mixed fisheries involve multiple species and multiple ge gears. So we are actually catching different sets of species with different types of gears. And this differs quite a bit from the traditional single species fishery we talk about the most. And that is simply because we do not have a perfectly selected gears to make sure that we only keep the species we want the most. And due to the multi-species and multi-gear dynamics, we will end up with very, very complex biological and technical interaction in mixed fisheries. And this big, sorry, I need to figure out this part. All right, okay. So this makes our traditional single species management approaches highly challenging. For example, uh, in the traditional single species management system, we will try to develop single species catch limit. But in the mixed fishery context, we will end up with incompatible catch devices, sometimes resulting in choking species issue. And further than that, we could have uh, some unaccountable impacts on non-target species, and we may end up with lots of bycatch and discarding behaviors. So in order to better manage mixed fisheries, we really need to know more about the mixed fisheries. And to do that, we believe that we need to answer the four following questions. So first, we need to understand what are their characteristics. And secondly, we need to understand what are the currently available approaches to manage and assess mixed fisheries. And third, we need to identify the currently uh, existing research gaps and progresses. And lastly, we need to identify what are the key factors that could contribute to a better management effect on mixed fisheries. Okay, so to answer these questions, we evaluated and reviewed 23 representative mixed fisheries worldwide. And specifically, we look at their management plans, look at their uh, stock assessment reports, and some of the relevant uh, academic publications. So here we have a wide array of different fisheries uh, from different parts of the world. And we try to include the most established systems in the world, as in the US, Australia, and Europe. And we also have some other fisheries with less developed systems. Okay, so with these fisheries, we first look at their characteristics. So I'm going to directly jump to the results here. And the first thing we try to identify is what are the mixed fisheries types are out there. So we're able to summarize uh, five types of mixed fisheries. So they are largely dependent on the target species you want to catch. So we have uh, demersal fisheries, pelagic fisheries, reef fisheries, uh, and shrimp fisheries. And other than that, we also have uh, more complicated multi-sector mixed fisheries, which involve normally more than one groups, uh, one types of uh, target species group, but sometimes they also involve uh, different fishing participants, like different fleets from different countries or different management bodies. Okay, so next we try to look at the size of these fisheries, and this size here are measured by the annual landing volume of these fisheries. So overall, we can see that the uh, size of mixed fisheries vary quite a bit. We have very small mixed fishery, as in the Australia uh, fishery system, and we also have extremely productive mixed fisheries, uh, up to 2 million tons, like in Alaska and China. So the first thing we look at is the gears involved in these fisheries. So overall, we can see there are at least two types of gear used in most of these mixed fisheries. And the average number of gears involved are 2.8. It's seven, which means they indeed have very strong multi-gear feature. And the top three most frequently used gears are trolls, hooks and lines, and gear nets. So further than that, we go a little bit quantitative here. So we try to figure out the catch combination to look at how mixed the mixed fisheries catch are. So here we try to measure the catch composition with three ecological indicators. So we look at specifically the species richness, the shadow winner uh, index to measure the catch diversity, and lastly we look at pillow index to look at the catch units. So you do not really need to look at every individual bar here, but you just need to focus on the aggregated value plot at the top. So overall we find that uh, mixed fisheries may not involve so many species demonstrated by the relatively low species richness, but it is highly likely that mixed fisheries can have very high catch diversity and extremely high catch units. So we further question that, what factors determine the complexity of mixed fisheries catch? So here we further aggregated these estimate indices by the uh, region of this fishery, 
uh, types of this fishery, and we plot the index against the latitude, uh, assuming there is a geographical effect, and we also plot that against the size of this fishery. So by conducting some simple statistic analysis, we found that a type of the fishery is an influential factor that determines catch diversity, while the size of the fishery is an influential factor to the evenness in catch, but other factors they do not have any statistical effect. So here I want to highlight that the type of fishery is kind of important, and we're going to get to this part later. Okay, so next we try to look at the single species stock status that are involved in every mixed fishery. So here we use pie chart to show the stock status uh, uh, married by biomass relative to BMS Y for each single species here. So we can see that uh, the biggest finding we have here is that even within the same mixed fishery, all the single species here could have very ex uh, distinct single species stock status. So uh, we find that uh, mixed fishery in Australia and in Alaska, they do have the best biomass status compared to other fisheries in the world. And uh, in the northeast United States, unfortunately, we are doing the worst here. And we further look at the fish mortality status relative to FMS. So we have quite similar observations compared to the last figure we had. And we noticed that Australia and Alaska are still doing the best in terms of curbing overfishing. Uh, the US Northeast is doing much better in terms of this. Uh, but overfishing is going on massively in Europe, particularly the North Bay in the Mediterranean. Okay, so with this characteristic graph, we next look at how these fisheries are assessed. So as we try to review the stock assessment for mixed fish, we notice that they are still predominantly assessed by single species approaches. Uh, so here we first try to look at single species approaches, but we do not look at the specific models. We simply classify them into uh, data rich and data limited methods according to the uh, local definition by these management agencies. So we found that the data rich method, which are marked in the green bar here, are still the predominant approaches used to uh, assess mixed fish, single species in mixed fisheries. Uh, but at the meantime, we still notice the wide application of data limited methods. And uh, in addition to that, we still notice many single species are not assessed in mixed fisheries. And we do have some of the data limited mixed fisheries that they do not have any stocks being assessed. So next, we try to look at the mixed fisheries considerations in stock assessment. So here, this means that we try to figure out how mixed fisheries effects are addressed through stock assessment. So here, there are lots of information, but I try to classify them into different tiers, different uh, scale, according to their scales. So firstly, we have the largest scale ecosystem-wide approaches. And they could take the form of ecosystem risk assessment, as in Australia. And in Europe, people do ecoregion overview. And here in the United States, we have a lot of tools like ecosystem assessment and PSA, which is a data limited uh, ecosystem risk analysis approach. And uh, below that, we have smaller fishery level considerations. For example, it's mostly taken in Europe. Uh, they do some of the echo mixed fisheries modeling, and they also conduct fisheries overview. So other than that, we have uh, the smallest scale multi-species level approaches, which is only observed in the U.S. in the uh, Gulf of Mexico shrimp fishery, where they actually perform a multi-species stock assessment, where they aggregate all the biomass, for, uh, aggregate all the data for the three or four different shrimp species together. So we still see many fisheries that do not consider mixed fisheries in assessment at all. Okay, so next we try to look at how these mixed fisheries are managed. The first thing we try to look at is the species being managed or being covered in their management plans. So we can see that the, the fundamental component of mixed fisheries management is target species that are covered in most mixed fisheries as long as they have management plan. Uh, but at the meantime, we notice non-target species are not necessarily managed, and uh, they're defined in a different ways using different terms. So here in the U.S., people try to define them. The most commonly used word is ECS, Ecosystem Component Species. So this is based on the consideration of their ecological roles in the system. Uh, we also have other terms like bycatch, byproduct, which are mostly uh, defined based on their economical importance of uh, selectivity behaviors of the fleet. And uh, we sometimes see a very few fisheries that consider protect protecting and endangered species in natural plants, but it's quite rare. Okay, so next we try to look at the primary management tools used in mixed fisheries. 
So we divided them into output control and input control tools. So we can see that for the output control tools, they are consistently using single species tag, and particularly in the US, because this is required by the Magnuson Stevens Act. And uh, for the input control tools, we do have a diversity of choices. For example, we have limits on gears, we have limits on uh, permits fishing this. And we do have some of, some of the very extensive large scale spatial or temporal closure. Okay, so next we try to look at how mixed fishes are considered in management systems. So this table looks quite similar to the stock assessment considerations we had earlier. So we still divide them into three scales. We have the largest scale ecosystem-wide approaches, and they are solely considered in Australia because they do follow the EBFM principles. And, in the, and below that, we have fishery level considerations in Europe and in South Africa. So in Europe, people try to define something called a METL based on the fishing behavior of a certain fleet. And they try to develop advice and try to understand their uh, competitiveness against each other in, in terms of their catch product. And the, the smallest scale sub-fisher level are actually the most widely used. So they have lots of options here. So we can see they have uh, sector-specific or fleet-specific catch limits, mostly determined based on the fleet permit or fleet uh, management bodies. And uh, in the US, people also have been using multi-species MSY. Uh, to, conduct, to come, kind of come up with a multi-species MSY defined for the entire fishery as in the Alaska fisheries. Okay. So, let's we look at the current research progress associated with these examined fisheries. So here we conducted an exhaustive literature review to summarize all the keywords covered and publications associated with these fisheries. So there are lots of information here. So we use a heat map to show the most well-studied topics which is demonstrated uh, vertically, and fisheries, which are demonstrated horizontally. So, uh, thematically, we found that the three most, uh, most well-studied topics are management strategy of mixed fishery, modelings, and bycatch and selectivities. And uh, the most well-studied mixed fisheries are mostly in Europe, particularly the North Bay mixed fishery. And the U.S. mixed fishery are also fairly well-studied on average, but we do have two fisheries that are completely ignored uh, by academia. So overall, we can see that there are very significant thematic and regional tendencies in mixed fishery studies. But if you look further into some of the summarized topic on the bottom here, you may see they could point to some very interesting future management or research directions, such as uh, socioeconomic considerations, such as, such as uh, climate change, or other monitoring options. Okay. So with all this information summarized, we finally try to understand which of these factors are kind of uh, influential to a better management effects. So here we measure the management effects or management performance using the stock status uh, in terms of biomass and fish mortality that has been demonstrated earlier. So here we have had to, of course, exclude the fishes without adequate data. So to pick the appropriate predictors here, we try to consider the four aspects we addressed earlier. So we look at the complexity of that mixed fishery, we look at stock assessment management and research progress, and we develop a suite of uh, different quantitative and categorical, uh, categorical uh, variables. So simple enough, we develop two separate reg regression models to look at the significance of different variables. There are a bunch of results here. So to better refine these results, we can go further here. So the first biggest finding we have in terms of this variable is that the scale of mixed fishery considerations management is the single significant variable that determine that are influential to both biomass conservation and curbing overfishing. So particularly when we consider mixed fishery at ecosystem wide level, we will have a significantly better result compared to other fisheries. Okay. So in order to curb overfishing in mixed fishery, we do have a lot of I mean, we more uh, factors that could be uh, influential. So what are the, in a simple word, the fewer gears we have in mixed fishery, the better it's we we end up with. The more stocks being assessed in mixed fishery, the better we go. And we can use ecosystem and multi-species assessment that could result in the best performance. And output control with single species catch quota always outperform in, uh, input control measures. And I'm uh, missing here is the more, more studies we have, the better effects we also have here. Okay, but to sum this up, 
The most important finding is that if we consider ecosystem considerations in management, we will always get a significantly better management uh, effects from this issue. Okay, so there are lots of information presented here. So I will wrap up with a few typical messages. So the first thing we find about mixed fishery is that they do have commonalities and differences. So this makes a one-size-fits-all management solution for mixed fisheries unlikely. So we need to develop ad hoc solutions. So the second thing is that although mixed fishery involve multi-species dynamics, uh, single-species approaches are still the foundation of assessment and management. However, we are able to consider mixed fishery effect through a diversity of approaches and a diversity of scales, such as ecosystem-wide approaches, fishery level, or sub-fishery level. So, uh, the single most important finding is that when we consider mixed fishery effect at single ecosystem-wide level, we will highly likely to end up with a better management performance. But we still need to define the best management practice for future uh, sustainability. Okay, so with that, I would like to thank NRDC for funding my research project, and I would also like to thank my uh, co-authors and contributors from all over the world. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. <laughs>